Chapter Two. Old Man, Mummies, Jack and Annie look out the window. The tree house was perched on the top of the palm tree. The tree stood with all the palm trees, a part of green surrounded by the sandy desert. Meow. Jack and Annie look down. A black cat was sitting at the base of the tree. His yellow eyes were staring up at Jack and Annie. Hi, Annie thought. Shh, said Jack. Someone might hear you. In the middle of the desert, said Annie. The black cat stood and began walking around the tree. Come back, Annie called. She leaned out the window to see what cat. The cat was going. Oh wow! She said. Look, Jack. Jack leaned forward and looked down. The cat was running away from the palm tree, toward a giant pyramid in the desert. A parrot was going toward the pyramid. The same parrot as in the Egypt book. Is the picture from the book? Said Jack. What are those people doing? Asked Annie. Jack looked down at the Egypt book. He read the word under the picture. When a royal person died, grand funeral procession took place. Family, servants, and mourner follow the coffin. The coffin was called a sarcophagus. It was pulled on the slate by four oxen. It's an Egyptian funeral," said Jack. The box it called a s s. Oh, forget it. He looked out the window again. Oxen, sled, Egyptian, black cat, all were moving in a slow, dreaming way. A bear made some noise about this," said Jack. He reached into his backpack and pulled out his notebook. Jack always keep nuts. Wait," said Jack, and he wrote, "Coffin called sacrifices." We better hurry," said Annie, "if we want to see the mummy." She started down the rope ladder. Jack looked up from his notebook. "Mummy," he said, "there's probably a mummy in that gold box." And he call up. We're we're in Egypt, Egypt. Remember, Jack loved mummies. He put down his pencil. Goodbye, Jack. And he call Annie. Wait, Jack call. Mummies. And he shout. Oh man, Jack said. Jack quickly. Mummy. She sure knew how to get to him. Jack shoved his notebook and the Egypt book into his backpack. Then he sat down later. When he got to the ground, he and Annie took up across the sand. But as they ran, a strange thing happened. The closer they got to the parrot. The harder it was to see it, then suddenly it was gone. The strand parrot would disappear, vanished. It. But the grey stone parrot was still there, towering above them. Painting, Jack looked around. What ha- happens? Where were the people? The ocean. The gold box, the cat. They're gone," said Annie. "Where did they go?" said Jack. "Maybe they were ghosts," <coughs> said Annie. "Don't be silly," 
There's not no such things a ghost," said Jack. <coughs> It must have been a marriage. A what? Marriage. It happens in the desert all the time. It looks like something's there, but it just turns out to be the sunlight reflecting through heat. How could sunlight look like people, a mummy box, and a bunch of cows? Said Annie. Jack frowned. Ghost, she said. No way, said Jack. Look, Annie pointed at the pyramid. Near the pass was a sleek black cat. He was standing alone. He was staring at Jack and Annie. It's no marriage," said Annie. The cat started to slink away. He walked along the base of the pyramid and slid around the corner. "Where's he going?" said Jack. "Let's find out," said Annie. They danced around the corner, just in time to see the cat disappear through the hole in the pyramid. Child three is alive. Where did he go? Said Jack. He and Annie peeked through the hole. They saw a long way burning torch lit the walls. Jack started to run. Let's go in, said Annie. Wait, said Jack. He pulled out the Egypt book and turned the section of pyramid. He read the caption aloud. Pyramid sometimes call houses of the dead. They were nearly、uh, all solid stone, except for the burial chambers deep inside. Wow! Let's go there to the burial chambers," said Annie. "I bet a mummy's there." Jack took a deep breath. Then he stepped out of the hot, bright sunlight into the cool, dark pyramid. The hallway was silent. Four selling walls. Everything was stone. The floors slanted up from where they stood. We have to go farther inside," said Annie. "Right," said Jack. "But stay close behind me. Don't talk. Don't go. Just go," said Annie. She gave him a little push. Jack stood. Jack stood up the slanting floor of the hallway. Where was the cat? The hallway went on and on. Wait," said Jack. "I want to look at the book." He opened the Egypt book again. He held it below, below a torch on the wall. The book showed the picture of the inside of the pyramid. The burial chamber is in the middle of the pyramid. See," Jack said. He pointed to the picture. It seemed to be straight ahead. Jack took the book under his arm. Then they head deeper into the pyramid. Soon the floor became flat. The air felt different, musty and stale. Jack opened the book again. I think we're almost at the burial chamber. See the picture? The whole waist lined up. Then it get flat. Then you come to the chamber. See, look, e a strange cry shot shot through the pyramid. Jack dropped the Egypt book. Out of the shadow flew a white figure. It swatches sh- toward them. A mummy is alive, and he shout.
Chapter Four: Back from the Dead. Jack pulled Annie down. The white finger moved swiftly past them, then disappeared into the shadow. A mummy," said Annie. "Back from the dead." "Forget it," stammered Jack. "Mummy aren't alive." He picked up the Egypt book. "What this?" said Annie. She lifted something from the floor. "Look, the mummy drops these things." It was a gold stick, up about a foot long. A dog's head. Was carved on one end. It looks like a scepter," said Jack. "What's that?" asked Annie. "It's a thing king and queen carry," said Jack. "It means they have power over the people." "Come back, Mummy," Annie called. "We found your scepter. Come back. We want to help you." Shh," said Jack. "Are you nuts?" But the mummy, that was not no mummy," said Jack. "It was a person, a real person. What kinds of person could be be inside the pyramid?" asked Annie. "I don't know," said Jack. "Maybe the book can help us." He flipped through the book. At last, he found a picture of a person in a pyramid. He read, "Tom Robert, often carry of the treasure buried with mummies, false papers were sometimes built to stop the robber." Jack looked the book. Jack closed the book. No leave, mummy," he said. "There's a tomb robber." "Yet a tomb robber," said Annie. "Yeah, a robber who steals stuff from tombs." "But what if the robber come back?" said Annie. "We better leave." "Right," said Jack. "First, I want to write something down." He put the easy book into his pack. He pulled out his notebook and pencil. He started writing in his notebook. Tom Robert, Jack said, "Annie, just a second," said Jack. He kept writing. Tom Robert tried to steal. Jack, look," said Annie. Jack felt the walls of cold air. He looked up. A wave of terror went through him. Another finger was moving slowly toward them. It wasn't a tomb robber. No, it was a lady, a beautiful Egyptian lady. She wore flowers in her black hair. Her long white dress had many tiny pleats. Her gold jewel. Jewelry, glittering, glittering. Her here, Jack. Annie whispered. Give her this. She handed him the gold skitter. <coughs> the lady stopped in front of them. <coughs> Jack held out the skitter. His hand was trembling. He gasped. The skipper passed right through the lady's hand. She was made of air.